Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible or whenever you happen to be watching. Of course, I'm with my girl Salt. You guys remember just a few days ago, she took a pretty good bite of me and I'm gonna be totally honest with you. It still is a little bit sore, but you know what? That's all part of it. And you know, ever since we've had her as a baby, we've been trying to desensitize her so that she won't actually act crazy. But you can see, I've gotta work with her more than ever now, right? She's getting a little bit bigger. As they get bigger, they start to get that you know like asserting their dominance like hey I'm not gonna listen to you anymore and that's when you have to break them I mean it's just like training any animal you've got to keep them intact right so one of the things that I used to do all the time was I would just take my finger and rub it around her ISOs which is all around her mouth now what happens with an alligator is those ISOs actually detect pressure in the water right so if anything breaches the water at all they immediately snap at it it's kind of like just an instinct almost like a reflex right so what we do is we de sensitize those actual ISOs. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know that I wanna use my finger anymore, so I'm gonna use a pen like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around like this and just desensitize her mouth like this, right? Just so that she understands that every time she gets touched, she isn't gonna snap. Cause that's what happened last time, is I got close and she decided to snap at me when she, her ISOs actually felt my finger. And so what I'm gonna do is just every day, I'm gonna work with her a little bit more, and I'm also gonna just spend maybe five minutes just rubbing a pen on her ISOs. This isn't hurting her in any way. It just is getting her more comfortable. Again, like we do with reflexes, right? When we want to actually take our reflexes away, like let's say when I get a snake bite, I don't have the reflex to pull away. Hence the reason why I don't have as many bad bites, right? It's the same exact thing. We're just trying to desensitize those reflexes, those ISOs. And that's what I'm going to do every single day, just so that no one else ever gets bit by her, right? And as she gets bigger, it's only going to get worse, right? So I've got to make sure she's always very calm but she is an absolutely wonderful animal. It just means my work has to be a little bit more, right? I have to put a little bit more time into working with Salt because I don't want anything bad to happen because I absolutely love this girl. <laughs> Take a look at Baby Kush, the croc monitor. He's just kind of hanging out. I love that look, you know? You always think of that like with a sloth or something like that with their legs just kind of hanging down, totally lazy, but don't think that he's not looking. Right now his eyes are just focused right on us like, what are you guys up to and stuff like that? Amazingly intelligent animal that I just think he He's unbelievably gorgeous. Speaking of sloth, we moved his hammock over here. Of course, Drogo's hanging out over here. But remember we installed this, or I should say Lori and Jay installed this? Well, he loves it. He's in this all the time. He climbs over here, and but look at how cute he is over there. Oh my God, he is so absolutely adorable. And hey, there's some news coming here within the next couple days I cannot wait to share with you guys. Meaning that pretty soon we're gonna be able to have him on exhibit, but I'll talk more about that in the next couple days. Just a quick update on the chameleons that we got a few weeks ago. They're doing really well I mean look at the collar on this thing so I think about another four or five days we'll have these over at the reptarium as a matter of fact I'm gonna do that kind of remodel thing where I'm moving the cages around a little bit before I bring them over there but this one is stunning and it's gonna be such a hit when it gets over to the Reptarium. Really cool animal, super tame, seems to tolerate handling tremendously well, and just, it's just nuts. I mean, look at the color. Sometimes it's red and green, now it's red and yellow. This thing is on fire. You guys may not know, but I am a huge fan of Gary Vaynerchuk, and he does something that's called overrated or underrated, typically on like tech stuff, business stuff. So I thought, why don't we bring that into the animal or reptile world? So uh, Jay is gonna hit me with some questions here, and I'm gonna tell you if I think it's underrated or overrated let's get started ball pythons I think properly rated, to be totally honest with you. I think that uh, they've been on a good run for a long time, uh, still have a long way to go, but I wouldn't say they're underrated because they're the most popular snake probably out there. And I wouldn't say they're overrated because I think that they get all the do that they need. So I'm gonna go with properly rated on this one. Colubrids. Colubrids underrated, 100% underrated. I mean, you know, they've had a resurgence over the last couple years, but I'm telling you what, corn snakes, king snakes, milk snakes, gopher snakes, totally underrated and I think that they have a lot of upside over the next probably five to ten years you're gonna see colubrids being a larger part of the hobby no doubt about it. Gatorland. Gatorland's underrated a hundred percent underrated probably one of the coolest reptile places in the planet other than maybe the reptarium. Now the truth is is that I love Gatorland and if anyone goes to Florida and goes to Disney and doesn't go to Gatorland shame on you. Universal Rocks. 
underrated. I mean, you know, Universal Rocks is, is something that, you know, we brought a lot of attention to them over the last couple years, but in my opinion, if you're looking at beautiful naturalistic enclosures, uh, it's hard to do foam and then grout or cement is very permanent, plus it's very time consuming. Although they are slightly expensive, well, they're pretty expensive to be totally honest with you. I still think it's way underrated. I think you're gonna see more hobbyists working with the polyurea type of stuff like Universal Rocks, so definitely underrated. That is snakes. Venomous snakes, I would have to say properly rated, you know, because it's a very niche world, right? So I think people love them and I think they're amazing and I think there's a huge draw to them, but I wouldn't say that they're underrated because they get a lot of attention, but I definitely wouldn't say overrated because I think that they're really cool. I think uh, it's not for everybody. In this case, I think they're just properly rated. Mangrove snakes. Underrated. I'm telling you what, Boega in general, now mangroves, all of the bo all the cat eye snakes, underrated, underrated. I think one of the reasons is is that the wild cuts did very poorly. So a lot of times people were afraid of them because they heard that there was a high mortality rate. Number two, they do have rear fang venomous, but the majority of people don't have a reaction. Number two, and then just when you're handling them, uh, you shouldn't uh, try to get bit, if you know what I mean. But I still think that Boega in general, mangroves being probably the most popular of that group are going to be a huge, huge part of the future of the hobby. Winter. Uh, it is so overrated. I mean, winter, anyone that likes winter, I think you need to have your your uh, mental capacities checked because uh, there's nothing good about going outside in the winter, at least in, in the cold weather states, you know. Winter in, uh, in, in Australia, not so bad, you know. Uh, winter in Michigan, uh, way, way overrated for the people that like it. Reptile zoos. I think reptile zoos are underrated. You know, there's not enough of them to be totally honest with you. And uh, and I know some people think like, oh, why would I want there to be more reptile zoos? I mean, you know, reptarium would, would be harmed if that was the case. I disagree. There's a great zoo in almost every major city in the country. And that doesn't mean that if you like the St. Louis Zoo that you're not gonna go to the Columbus Zoo and the Cincinnati Zoo and the, and the you know, the San Diego Zoo. Uh, zoos are great, you know? And I think that the more reptile zoos we can get out there, the more people will be exposed to these amazing animals. Uh, and if you haven't been to a reptile zoo, you need to go to a reptile zoo because they are totally, totally underrated and the upside is incredible. Brian Barchek. I think uh, properly rated. I think properly rated. I think that uh, there are people that think highly of me and there's people that think very lowly of me and I think that they balance out and I think that uh, I get a lot of credit for things and I don't get enough credit for some things. Uh, so I think that I'm right in the middle there and, and I'm happy where I'm at. Uh, although I, I think uh, without sounding arrogant, I think there's a lot of upside in my future. So uh, uh, I think it's properly rated. So let me know what you guys think. It was fun for me. Uh, if you have some questions, go ahead, put them down in the comments and maybe next time we do this again, we'll use one of your comments. Remember a couple months ago when we got the lychee geckos, the lychianus, of course the giant geckos from New Caledonia. Well, they're definitely starting to grow big. I mean, they've already like two, three times their size. I'm amazed at how big they actually get. And these are what they would call GT or Grand Torino, which is the main island of New Caledonia. And unbelievably cool. Just to think that this animal one day is gonna be a giant gecko is pretty cool. Again, we're really kind of getting geared up for that rachidactylus room down in the basement that I cannot wait to have. That way we don't have to just look at these in tubs, but we can admire them in like almost like a miniature reptarium down in the basement. I'm super excited about making that room and I know Jessica is too and she's doing a great job with these lychees. They are absolutely adorable at this size. And then this is one of the yearlings we got last year but this is a locality called a Boise Island. Absolutely incredible. Now these do stay a little smaller than the Grand Torino uh, because they are an insular island so this is almost big enough to breed to be honest with you but it's just not quite old enough. Typically you need two sometimes even three years old before a lychee will breed, but just look at the greens and the pinks that are coming out of that. That thing is ridiculous. And again, we have some adults now that we're gonna be breeding this year, like Big Bertha, the first one that we ever got, and a handful of other ones. So hopefully with any luck this summer, we're gonna have some baby lychees. And again, Rachidactylus is a huge part of our future. We wanna do a bunch of things. We've been raising up a lot of really beautiful red animals. Of course, we work with the Dracula, we work with Deadpool from Tiki's Geckos, but this is actually a different bloodline and just as red absolutely 
stunning. And Jessica's doing a great job of holding back a bunch of channels. We're gonna have some rippers over the next couple of years. And again, when that rack of Dacklis room is done, these will all go over there and they're gonna be so happy. I cannot believe how beautiful they are. Oh, and by the way, speaking of little baby rack of Dacklis, I think that Jessica actually has some babies hatch right now. And like I mentioned, Jessica has some babies for us. What do we have yeah, today? We've got cresteds and gargoyles. Cresteds and gargoyles. Okay, so let's start each. with the cresteds real quick. See what we got. This is from Sweet Pea and Riff Raff. I don't know if we've Sweet looked at any of their babies yet really? on camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what yeah. are they? Are they like Harlequins? Uh, yeah, or? they're probably going to be extreme Harlequins. If you look real close, okay. they've got a ton of pattern like all the way up the sides. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yeah, well, they'll probably be really pretty. That's always cool. And then, of and course, some little gargoyles. Oh my god, oh. they're pretty. What, <laughs> so what they're line is this? So crazy. Oh this gosh. is uh, Nosferatu and Black Swan. So oh uh, they're both pretty black and white. One is... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Nosferatu is a stripe and then uh, Black Swan is a reticulated one with oh pretty gosh. like bold patterning on it. That thing is gorgeous yeah. though. I so mean, they're both really cool. So these should be like black and white. Black and white. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. They're so cool. I tell you what. I love it. Just love the fact that we're getting geckos. Oh, by the way, so I text Matt. He's going to move that wall here soon. And then we can get going on that wall. Oh my God, I'm so, so excited about As soon as the wall's that. in, then we start building cages. <laughs> All right, so Rackadactylus room coming soon. Lori, this is a cool box because it says open before Christmas. This is from Anthony from Pennsylvania. And it's not Christmas, so. <laughs> it's literally the new year. <laughs> uh, so, so Anthony, I apologize for not opening before Christmas. Literally, we just got this from the PO box, so maybe it was a little slow, number one, okay. maybe two. You made stickers that says, this gift is for the bar Oh checks. my gosh, it's How a cute is that? that is super cute. Well, thank you guys. So I'm sorry that we didn't open it before Christmas, but we're gonna open it right now. And we're gonna pretend like it's Christmas. You opened it before next Christmas. Yeah, which Christmas was he talking about? It's not specific, so it's fine. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Oh my God. Well, how about you read? Oh my gosh. It says, That's a good shirt. Please read before looking. <laughs> I've messed this one up, but man, I tell you what, I am already blown away. Hang on a second here. Let me just open this up here. I need a knife to open an envelope. You know what I mean? All right, here we go. All right, sending the Mary, and I'm assuming Christmas. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of words. Uh, enclosed, please find a Christmas gift from uh, uh, Anthony. What does it say? Please find a Christmas gift from Anthony Draw Cartoons. We have been fans for three years and enjoy your videos and podcasts. Thank you so much. These designs are all original from their family and a gift from us that you hopefully will enjoy. Happy holidays. Listen, I am so sorry because I would have been sporting this shirt. Are you kidding? I'm still gonna sport this shirt. I don't even care that it's not Christmas. <laughs> this is one of the dopest shirts I've ever seen. This is that crazy is sweet, cool. Man. So there's that. Oh my gosh! You wait. So okay. you oh, how you didn't have enough Christmas okay. shirts to they get have through? Names on them. You're right. <gasps> oh my glory! Oh my gosh! They all have. Oh my god! And then check. Look at this one. Check a look. Up. Check a look. Up. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> That is so cute. This is crazy <laughs> good. I mean, I am so sorry we didn't open this before Christmas. I'm excited but for I'm you. So, look at this. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, I'm wearing this today. That is awesome. <laughs> Sick. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and there's more. There's more. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> oh my god. I'm flipping. I am flipping out right now, guys. I. Oh my gosh. Dang. They need to do merch is, for us. This is crazy. No this, is cr this is crazy. I legitimately am flipping out. Look at this. Oh, wow. Bella with her banana. Oh my gosh. And there's more. There's more. Oh my gosh. Rep Terrium Crunk. We got to get these for. Don't. 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 Look at this. Wow. Uh, that, that is so cool. That is that, so seriously, cool. Seriously, I'm sorry we didn't open it. This Christmas came. This is next year's Christmas gift. <laughs> I am blown away. I mean, I thank you so much. Legitimately. Is there another one? Nope, no, you got them all. Legitimately, some of the coolest shirts. I, I, I'm, I'm speechless. Thank you so much. Seriously, I, uh, I'm gonna call you by the way because we gotta talk. <laughs> this is amazing. So again, guys, let me know what you think about the over underrated segment. What you think I should cover in the future in the comments? Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Could you do me a favor? Hit a couple of videos in this playlist. It helps my click through rate and that helps this channel. Thank you so much for that. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. I appreciate it. Over here, we're getting close to three million. Hit that subscribe button for this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.